Canadian spending uh, ended up being a failure in the 70s. So some proponents argued a new old approach, which is, which is why we got the neo here. For neo means new liberalism, means the old laissez-faire uh, policy. So in the uh, basically early 1980s, late 1970s, we have a movement known as the neoliberal uh, movement or ideas, policies. And the idea here is a uh, return of market, or I say free market, free market slash laissez-faire fair practices. Now, uh, these guys aren't like old Adam Smith proponents that say get rid of all government because it's bad. We know what happens when you have zero government. You get monopolies and cronyism and down cycles and all of that. So that's saying cut the entire thing, some might have. Uh, but they're not necessarily saying cut the entire thing. What they're saying is we have a problem. A lot of our government involvement is resulting in inflation and uh, contributing to uh, unemployment. Uh, and that's, of course, causing this whole stagflation process. Their idea was simply this. If the problem is we've got a lot of people without jobs and prices are too high because of cost of production, why don't we just get rid of some of these costs so we can lower taxes and the prices decrease? And what happens if you decrease prices? What happens to demand? If I lower the price, demand goes up. Yeah, that's a law of demand, right? So here's their theory. They were proponents of what's called austerity, which basically means cutbacks on government spending and programs. So they're like, well, we've got a whole host of things that are new. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so good. And, or maybe some of them aren't working properly. But they're very expensive. So their idea was to cut back on some of them. Not, maybe not eliminate them, but certainly step back on them. And the idea here is, if we reduce some of these and are able to reduce taxes, then we'll be able to lower taxes, which will, of course, lower the cost of production for producers which of course will lower the market price. So here's like the sequence that they thought would work. So this is austerity. Cut taxes and programs. I should say programs too, which cuts the spending so you don't need the taxes. Um, which cut, cuts the cost of production for, for uh, consumers and for businesses. Lowers the market price for consumers. And like you, someone over here mentioned, when I decrease the price, demand goes up. What happens when I increase demand? Supply goes down. It does, you're right. Okay, so if I need to produce more things, I'm not producing enough to meet the demand, what do I need to do at a, at a company? If I'm like, if I've got like a shortage, like man, I can't make enough, what do I need to do? Hire more people, right. And this in turn would cause employers to uh, increase employment. Would this theoretically solve or at least partially solve this problem here. Theoretically, it would, right? So the problem is prices are too high because the government's spending in taxes. I've got uh, a large amount of unemployment. So their theory is, well, let's cut some of this back, which lowers the cost of production, lowers the market price, increases the demand. And that, of course, means employers have to hire people. Uh, and that's the idea. This theory here, by the way, is called the uh, trickle-down economic theory. And here's what it is, basically. It's cut taxes and programs, specifically cut taxes for uh, companies, corporations, and, and the wealthy. So that way, they can reinvest more money into their businesses. Um, and then, of course, that will increase employment. So that's the idea behind this. It's called austerity. It becomes very popular. You've probably heard the name Ronald Reagan before. Ronald Reagan. You've heard the name. Good. Uh, he was one of the main proponents of this. This one you might not have heard, but she was equally popular at the time. Uh, was, uh, so he's the US president, obviously, in the 1980s. I think it was 1981 to 89. Uh, and he also had a partner in the UK, which is, you might think of as Britain, um, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Margaret Thatcher. Didn't you have this thing called Reagan economics? Yeah, trickle down economics is also called Reaganomics. Uh, yeah. But it's basically this 
this idea that if you cut programs and taxes, that allows uh, uh, businesses uh, to lo lower the cost of production, put more money back into their uh, actual business, lower the market price, increase demand, and increase employment. That's the idea behind it. All right, uh, so Margaret Thatcher for the UK, she's the prime minister from like 1979 to 90, I think. Um, so her and uh, uh, Reagan were both proponents of this, and a lot of Western country countries sort of adopt these programs. So again, what they start doing is they try to cut back on um, this specifically. Uh, a little bit on the uh, uh, union wages, but mostly they're focusing on cutting um, programs, like they cut back on some social programs, uh, some environmental regulations, and the idea is to lower taxes and start this cycle. The reason why we don't have a good indication of whether this worked or not was because at the exact same time, Ronald Reagan and Thatcher, more so Reagan, really, really, really increased military spending. So these went down, dropped regulations, dropped social spending, uh, but they really increased military spending. Anybody know why? Just for funsies? Oh, because a lot of people were against the Vietnam War. This is just after it, actually. This is a few years after it. You probably didn't get this far in your U.S. history class. Easy. Oh, that was in the 60s. Good guess, though. Good guess, though. It has to do the Cold War. This is where in the 1980s, uh, we don't know. If, oh, maybe you know. Uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. That's what I said. It's a good guess. It's a good guess. It really is. Um, in the 1980s, uh, Reagan and a lot of the uh, Western countries intentionally spent a ton more money on the uh, uh, military. And the idea was to restart this Cold War. And what happens is the Soviet Union, who we were in the Cold War with, running a, a, a communist centrally planned economy, couldn't keep up with our spending. Because if we drastically increase our military, they kind of have to since they're our enemies. So we made them try to keep up with us and their economy sort of collapsed and inevitably led to uh, the revolution of 89 and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, so would this have worked? Did it work? We don't know. Um, the uh, studies that look at taxing and, and this, this general policy kind of show us by the Library of Congress study, not that you care, but more so for the internet. Otherwise, I get comments saying, well, what about this thing? Well, I mentioned it. Um, Library of Congress studies showed kind of inconclusively that this worked, but it's hard to determine because, again, even though they cut back on uh, regulations and uh, social programs to reduce taxes, they had to increase them immediately uh, because they increased military funding. So did it work? Ah, it's inconclusive. We're not exactly sure, but they do try that in the 1980s. And uh, this is still something that Republicans and Democrats are yelling at each other about. Because Democrats want to cut military spending, increase social spending, and then Republicans want to decrease social spending, increase military spending. But they're kind of arguing about the same thing. It's like, well, you're both going to raise taxes um, uh, because you want to spend a bunch of uh, federal money. You're just choosing different categories to spend on. Uh, regardless, uh, that is what's going to occur. And this whole movement that believe in cutting back on these taxes to reduce cost production and, and, and create jobs by increased demand, that's known as austerity. Uh, the specific plan employed by uh, Reagan uh, was trickle-down theory. But this is all part of bringing back classical uh, uh, liberal economics where you try to keep the government out of involvement in the economy. You guys got that? Again, it's neoliberal because we do know you can't go totally laissez-faire. We know it's a disaster. Well, not a disaster, but it has a lot of problems. Uh, we have to have some involvement, some intervention, um, you know, antitrusts and uh, running cronyism, and you have to have some sort of social safety net. You can't just be, I got an accident, so I'm pretty much just dead then. Um, so we have to have some sort of uh, safety net for those people that do have unfortunate situations. Um, I've got family friends that, you know, their husband uh, dies or ends up being a deadbeat and leaves. And it's like, well, now it's just a single mom with a couple kids. It's just like, well, sorry, lady, have fun. Like, it's, it's good that there are, are programs to help out with that. So any questions about this movement in the 80s? We'll get a little more into it next week uh, and talk about how they actually were able to get rid of this stagflation issue.